Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Lisa Joseph bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. The OECS Commission retools its public awareness campaign for a more effective fight against HIV AIDS. The Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute celebrates more than four decades of service to the region. And major productions are planned for the 40th anniversary of the island's independence. Combating HIV AIDS in St. Lucia and the rest of the OECS has taken on a more centered approach with the OECS Commission retooling the public awareness campaign. The Commission is heightening HIV awareness and advocacy in conjunction with civil society organizations and various ministries of health. More from Anisia Antoine. In commemoration of World AIDS Day 2018, the OECS released a series of public service announcements on HIV awareness and advocacy. World AIDS Day was observed on the 1st of December under the theme Know Your Status. The OECS HIV TB Elimination Project Coordinator, Dr. Cleophus Dovey, said that this was an opportunity for all citizens across the OECS to join in a worldwide movement to unite in the fight against HIV. Know your status. Know your status is important because it's part of the UNA's 1999 treatment um, cascade. And for the OECS, we've done quite a bit of, of work in achieving these goals. We're currently at 80% of persons knowing their status, 48% of patients being placed on antiretroviral therapy, and 48% having full viral suppression. So we are more or less resolute in achieving those targets, and knowing your status is an important part of this. Dr. Dovey stated that the global community should play their part in encouraging education at a grassroots level where all the difference can be made. So the OECS continues to have challenges in terms of the response to HIV and some of those challenges include um, the continued stigma and discrimination faced by persons living with HIV, furthermore a loss to follow up, uh, patients dropping out of care, treatment and care. We also have um, some level of difficulty in terms of a multi-sectoral approach in terms of data collection um, and there needs to be a greater focus on the youth, targeted interventions for the youth, uh, because for the region, Caribbean region, we see a slight increase in the incidence of HIV, new infections in HIV um, for the youth. Dr. Cleophas Dovey stated that the OECS has been making strides to overcome some of those challenges by introducing new technology for faster diagnosis of HIV, as well as identifying key at-risk populations. From the Government Information Service, I am Manisia Antoine reporting. The Caribbean Science Foundation has announced plans to establish computer coding workshops in St. Lucia. As we hear from Chris Satney, a team from the Caribbean Science Foundation was on island recently to lay the groundwork ahead of the start of the program in January 2019. The goals of the CSF Computer Coding Workshops are to stimulate more student interest in science and engineering careers, especially computer science, and to help prepare students for university study in the STEM disciplines in general. Adjunct Program Manager of the Caribbean Science Foundation, Gillian Hassel, says the first of multiple workshops in St. Lucia will take place every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon between January 12th and March 30th, 2019 at the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School and will culminate in a public showcase by the participants on March 30th, 2019. It's quite a long commitment, it's 12 weeks, so we're requiring that the participants are committed to this um, initiative, but we expect that when we're finished with that, that they will be able to offer themselves up to industry, to either design websites or to create mobile apps that will be of benefit to the country. Professor Cardinal Ward, who is the Interim Executive Director of the Caribbean Science Foundation, says the CSF is excited to assist St. Lucia with the diversification of its economy by harnessing science and technology for economic development, thereby helping to raise its standard of living. The goal is to take these, the brightest in the Caribbean and help them to prepare to go to the university of their choice and we encourage them to stay in science and engineering because engineers create more jobs than doctors and lawyers, which is where most of our bright young people go. 
And we think that to build this economic pillar, to start building this new economic pillar for the region, we have to also encourage more technology companies to come into the region and also encourage our people to become entrepreneurs, some of them who, who are, have that in their veins. The CSF, which is headquartered at the Cable campus of the University of the West Indies, Barbados, is undertaking the training with grant support from the U.S. Embassy to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OACS. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, has meantime thrown her support behind the initiative. So there's really marrying all the fancy stuff about robotics, science, e-skills, digital competencies, all with a view to exciting our students when it comes to technology and, and leveraging technology, not only for recreational purposes, but also to enhance their employability. And that is why I'm particularly happy with this initiative. St. Lucian residents who are interested in a career in ICT, particularly in website or mobile application development, are encouraged to apply to participate in the workshop. Applicants must be Caribbean citizens over the age of 15 years, out of school and at risk youth, individuals with disabilities, females and science and mathematics teachers are especially encouraged to apply by visiting the website caribbeanscience.org. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. The Caribbean Agriculture Research and Development Institute, CARDI, with the support of the Ministry of Agriculture, is hosting a series of activities in celebration of a major milestone. Miguel Morissette fills us in. This week, the Caribbean Agriculture Research and Development Institute, CADI, celebrates its open day on December 5th, which marks 44 years of its existence. As part of the commemorative activities, CADI is currently hosting a two-day seminar, which commenced on the 3rd of December at the CADI Field Station in Larishus Denry. CADI's representative in St. Lucia, Andrea Vera, gave an insight into the seminar and what is to come as part of their celebrations. We are working with coconuts. Coconuts has been one of the major projects for CADI between 2014 and 2018 in phase one of the project, which is funded by the EU, the ACP, and the ITC. So today we'll be looking at coconut production and nursery establishment. And tomorrow we'll be looking at integrated pest management, germplasms, and intercropping, all to do with coconut plantations, coconut fields, coconut farms, coconut production. I would just like to invite everyone to our ceremony this Wednesday commemorating Caddy Day. It will be at the Caddy Field Station in Larry Shoe Stenery from 9.30 a.m. We will be showcasing our work done in 2018, focusing primarily on coconuts, but we will also let you know what else we've been working on. We will also have some exhibitors showing their products on display, coconut flour, coconut soaps and cosmetics, various different confectionaries and candies. So we would like to invite everyone to come out. There will be posters. The school children are also invited. Kadi's coconut technician, Kwame Adujimfi said, there is a huge prospect for coconut production in St. Lucia. Coconut has a lot of benefits that people have not discovered yet. And that's what this project is even aiming at, especially the value addition that people don't know. Many people think that all that coconut gives us is just the water and the jelly. When we can have art and craft from it, we can have, um, uh, like my colleague said earlier on, we can have uh, things that can support our soil system and crop production and all that, like serve as mulch and all of these things. So there are so many things we can get. We can get confectionaries also from it. And many people don't see these things as an ad addition to what they can get from coconut. So yes, at the moment, I think that it's booming and it's going to be one of the leading crops in the country if we pay attention to it. Caddy's week of activities is being held under the theme Pie Coco pour la vie, which English translation is Coconut Tree for Life. From the communications unit in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Miguel Morris at reporting. This is Nation Beat. Major productions are planned for the 40th anniversary of the island's independence. The details are coming up. If you have to do your own spray mix for black sigotoga treatment, always follow the recommended safety procedures. 
always wear protective gear when handling or being exposed to the fungicide or other pesticides. Use only the fungicides recommended by the Black Sigatoka Management Unit when the treatment is due. The required quantity of the particular fungicide recommended must be mixed with spray oil and applied at a rate of 1.5 to 2 gallons per acre. Fungicides which are not recommended or applied at the wrong time or even when the spray treatment is not done effectively can cause the fungus to become resistant to the chemical and therefore may no longer control the disease. Oil fungicide mix which has been stored for too long should not be used to treat black cigatoga disease. If carried out, such treatments may not be effective and can lead to poor control of the disease. Remember, before each chemical treatment for black cigatoga disease on your farm, first, the oil fungicide mix must be reagitated immediately before application. For more information on how to treat and control black cigatoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, Contact the Black Sigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. The government of St. Lucia is preparing to lead all St. Lucians in a year-long celebration of one of the most significant milestones in the island's history, the 40th anniversary of nationhood. The Independence Planning Committee, headed by President of the St. Lucia Senate, Honorable Janine Jody McIntyre, says the occasion is being marked with input from all aspects of the society. On February 21st, 2019, the eve of Independence Day, a major production has been planned. Sonia Sifley is a member of the planning committee. In terms of the St. Lucia story, the St. Lucia story is one which I think if we all come out and listen, we're going to see the everywhere we trace the evolution of St. Lucia from creation until contemporary society. And apart from that, we're going to be showcasing the best of St. Lucia, the best of St. Lucia in terms of music. In terms we have, we're going to cover all the, gen the major genres of music and we're going to be seeing t traditional folk, calypso, soca, everyone, etc., etc., included in this evening. So hence, it will end in with a fireworks display. And on Independence Day, February 22nd, 2019, the traditional parade will be staged with a difference. It will be like a carnival type parade, which will start from the VG roundabout into the cat into Castries, where we're going to have 40 contingents of people. We're going to have the music trucks. We're going to have um, floats. We're going to have mobile displays. And it's going to encompass everything St. Lucian. This is what we are about. We want, again, like I said, it is so wide. We're still accepting ideas from persons, groups who want to come on board. It's open to everyone. It's open to the commercial houses. All what we ask is that we will maintain the St. Lucian theme. And the year-long celebration of the island's 40th anniversary of independence officially begins at the staging of the Festival of Lights, December 12, 2018. A major gathering of regional and global geothermal experts will convene in St. Lucia to chart the way forward to transform the energy landscape of the OECS to deliver lower energy prices, reduce the costly dependence on imported fossil fuels, and enhance the region's efforts at climate change mitigation. The three-day roundtable dialogue and resource classification training forum opens Wednesday, 5th December 2018 at the Harbour Club in Rodney Bay, Grosley from 9 a.m. And we'll have more on that in a subsequent broadcast. Well, that's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. And on this station, as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Lisa Joseph.